to our answers, to our ancestors, to our sacred and divine ancestors, be our guardians of the gateway of the sacred womb. Please accept our deepest gratitude for your healing presence on our altars and in our lives. Thank you for your guidance and inspiration and for your love and blessings. And please accept our love and blessings in return. <laughs> Hitepsi. Welcome, beloved, to the Sacred Sister Circle that we have here at the Sankofa Ancestor Shrine. I'm really excited to continue our journey through the gateways, or actually really start the journey. We've done the pre-journey stuff, but I'm going to just go ahead now and hop into the first gateway, or gateway zero, should I say, of sacred womb. Before I start, I do want to remind you that the only things you really need is yourself, and hopefully a divination method, and some kind of head covering. That's about all that I'm really requiring for this. I have the book, um, and you could get two, co two coins, three coins, uh, just get a bunch of pennies <laughs> to have a divination. You can also, I have these from, I made a Hi John figurine for the shop on ritualready.org. And it, I had to get these little micro dice. And it occurred to me, I was like, oh my goodness, you could use these little dice, just get two dice. And you could also have a divination method right there, right? Um, I do keep a big dice in my um, bone throwing set. So it's it's viable. It's easy. You can use sticks. You can use leaves. Um, you know, there's so many different ways that you can make yourself an easy, easy divination method. And it's just a really wonderful way to gain clarity as well as get that practice in of, you know, reading for yourself and tuning for yourself. And um, you don't even really need to have things. I know that um, in the Sacred Woman book, she does discuss um, ways to, you know, use your intuition, ways to use your fingers for yes and for no. I'm pretty sure we did that when I took my Sacred Woman um, training. Um, maybe it was Sacred Woman Practitioner. I'm not sure which one it was, but I do know we did practice with that. So you don't even really need anything. I just know using those tools, having them in your hand really helps a lot of people. And it's just a really solid way to visualize what's going on and what, what it is that you're doing in your reading. Okay, so Gateway Zero, Sacred Womb, um, the element is water. And so this is really a, a reminder of so many different things, right? When we think of the water, we think about both being malleable, you know, able to conform into what we need to, to shape ourselves into what we need to, but also being a force to be reckoned with, right? To uh, have that strength along with the gentleness. You know, you, you are the ocean wave as well as, you know, a little droplet of water. Um, this is also a really good time to start getting into spiritual baths, which we're definitely going to talk about. And the other reason why um, the sacred womb is so connected with water is because our wombs are so connected with water, right? They bleed every month. Um, and they, uh, there's also the element of having a child where your womb does have the fluids inside, right? The child is floating around inside of water. And so even if you don't have an, a pregnancy, you don't even perhaps have your womb anymore, this symbolically can be applied to what you're doing in your life. You know, your goals can be what you're creating in your womb space, your um, ambitions, what you're trying to uh, achieve within your life. You use that same womb energy, use that same um, flow that water has when it's within our womb. Uh, in that creation, but also in that release for different things. So I hope we can keep that in mind while we're reading through this first um, little, this first um, spiritual observances that have to do with the elements of water, right? That should always be kind of in the back of our mind when we're doing things. And it's also a good way to, like I said, for spiritual baths, you know, it's not always about just lighting candles or that type of thing. The water element is a really important one that you can use that's around you pretty much all the time. 
The sacred womb is the gateway to all gateways. I'm on page 28 if you have your book. Each gateway present, represents a spiritual exercise of ascension. The practices offered for gateway zero um, are to be performed daily for a minimum of 21 days to a maximum of four months. Disciplining yourself to honor this path will awaken your inner gateways of divinity so that you may blossom and establish your full sacred center. The sacred womb lays a foundation of womb wellness that will serve as your preparation for the nine gateways of initiation. Through the uh, days of training, you will learn how to cleanse toxic thoughts, foods, and attitudes out of your divine body temple. You will present to your womb the gift of wellness philosophy. This includes the natural living approach to food, womb rejuvenation techniques, womb affirmations, and womb meditations for total attunement. So uh, she begins with the spiritual bath. Begin your journey into Gateway Zero by entering the depths of the ocean. One way to honor the intention is to create a dawn ritual of taking a spiritual bath with Epsom salts or Dead Sea salts when you rise between the hours of 4 and 6 a.m. So this part about rising between 4 and 6 a.m. is very difficult, I know, for a lot of people, especially if you've got a lot going on in your life. Um, but it's just a really great way to, one, those, this is an hour of, you know, spiritual connection. Um, it's a, a wonderful time to, in the stillness, reach out and try to connect with your ancestral messages. But also, it's a form of discipline. It's a form of, you know, figuring out how it is that you perhaps can, um, you know, train yourself or hold yourself accountable to things or um, dedicate yourself to what it is that you say that you want and what it is that you'd like to achieve. Um, so you can do this um, spiritually, uh, uh, taking this bath to really commit yourself to what it is you're about to achieve or go through or this journey that you want to take. It can be literally in the ocean if you're blessed like that and you're able to just get out down to the waters. But it can also be something that you just post in your bathroom, give your bathroom a good clean, a cleansing, and then go ahead and light some candles in there, set some ambiance, get some incense burning, and go ahead and do it in there. Make a ceremony out of your bath. Light the candles and incense, have soft, inspiring music playing, Bless your bath water. Use the bath to release all negativity, everything that blocks the free movement of light, of love, of healing, and peace through your sacred womb and body temple. You do want to have that love, right, when we're doing our self-healing work. It's not always about, you know, um, there are there is duality, right, in hoodoo, but what we're looking for here is for that self-healing, is for that self-understanding and uh, uplifting. So, Blessing your bath water, I think, is also one of the more important parts. It's not just about making a bath. You got water. Mm. Blessing that water. You know, you can bless the water before you take a drink out of a cup. I'm, I'm consistently doing that because it's just, you know, just a wonderful way to refresh yourself and take in all of those blessings. Um, you add the essential oils of frankincense the essential oil of frankincense to the bath water to open your crown or or chakra frankincense attunes you to the divine oneness of inter inspiration and divine wisdom and it brings forth the divinity and the sacredness of the womb it eliminates confusion and depression put seven drops into your bath water also add seven drops of frankincense into a bowl of purified water on your altar and you can sprinkle a few of those drops around your prayer space. She does specify frankincense, and if you have it, that's really wonderful. And if you can afford to get some, I also encourage that. If you do not have frankincense, what can you choose to do for this opening ceremony? You can go to your cupboard and look at what spices you might have in there. You might have some cinnamon in there. Um, you might have some... Uh, cloves even or something like that something that could just sense up the water you might have other essential oils that you can look into which each one of the ones you have and just choose the one that's best fits your situation right you could have bay leaves also are something that you might have that you can try out um, for your bath just 
put those in the water or uh, and let them soak or put them in some hot water and let them steep that way. You can also go outside, talk with some of the, perhaps you have like a rosemary bush outside. Perhaps there's some kind of flowers that catch your eye when you walk through your neighborhood. Go talk to that plant, leave them a little something. Maybe you'll pour some water on them, some libations to help them be fed. Maybe you'll leave a small gift of some kind that of your choosing, but communicate with the plant. See if you can take a couple of those flowers and simply just use whatever flower is available outside to you. Um, let's see. So, oh, and then also having that water at the altar, it just brings both of those things together, connects those two things together. So do put aside a little bit in a little decorative bowl of some kind to put on your altar space so that you can sprinkle it around your altar, but also perhaps a little over your crown when you go visit your ancestors at the altar. The altar, she says, page 26, they do have a um, discussion about the sacred altar preparations. I will read that real quick for you right now. We'll just skim right through everything. A sacred tablecloth to cover the top. These are all just suggestions. Look around your house, see what you have, what you don't have. You're going to have to skip, and your altar is going to turn out just fine, no matter how simple or extravagant it is, no matter how store-bought or handmade everything is. Use what you have and do what you can, and um, you know, think of the different substitutions you can use for these things. So cover with a clean white a cloth for purity, add the appropriate suggested color for the gateway you're working on. You could use a blue cloth to create peace, for example, within the womb and lessen menstrual bleeding. And that may be just what you have for yours at all times. You may not switch it up as much. Um, but, you know, finding some beautiful cloth, you know, I have this beautiful green here that would look lovely on an altar, I think. And uh, right now, mine is a light blue. So it's just up to you what you have use. Pictures. Inspirational pictures of yourself in a wood, a beautiful frame made from natural material upon your altar to remind you of your divinity. Next, add some pictures or symbolic representations of spiritual guardians, ancestors, elders, and contemporaries who support you at each gateway. Now this part, if you're doing it, remember this should not be on your actual ancestor altar. That should be only for ancestors, only for the dead. This would be a different altar that you made in a different corner of your house or maybe a small shelf or maybe on the top of a table that you can, you know, clear off and use for this purpose at this time. You should not be putting pictures of yourself or your elders or your other people who are alive contemporaries on the ancestor altar. But it is wonderful to have that inspiration. Every time you would go to your sacred woman altar, you'll be able to kneel down and see that vision of what you would like to be or who inspires you to continue. Um, and as I've said before, this may not be people who all, you know, dress like a queen or, you know, have swaths of clothing, blah, blah, blah. They may, you know, look a little more witchy, right? They may look a little more modern with some of their outfits, alternative with some of their outfits. But I'm sure you do have a vision of what you're trying to look like, what you're trying to achieve, what kind of person you're trying to be. And it, even if it's not just a specific person, you can go on like, um, and on like Pinterest or something and make a collage of the, these different clothes and items that inspire you and bring out beauty to you. You can put up pictures of, you know, nature if you're trying to get more involved with Mother Earth. Um, there's so many, you know, endless options you can use here to really um, inspire you. Every time you go to your altar, your altar will not look like somebody else's, nor should it. We shouldn't be trying to make it look exactly like somebody else's. Sacred stones. Place the recommended stones on your altar to harness the energies of the mineral kingdom in support of your healing intentions. For example, rose quartz is a wonderful tool for invoking the energies of divine love. Use what stones that you have, and if you don't have any crystals around you, uh, you haven't, you know, had them, or maybe you moved or lost them at some point, go find some minerals outside. There are some beautiful rocks outside that you can absolutely use 
um, on your altar. You could paint some rocks. You could use them naturally as they are and have a couple of those beautiful stones or pebbles inside your house on your altar as well. It does not have to be something that you manage to go and get a huge amount of somewhere. Um, fresh flowers or plants. Use fresh flowers or plants to establish the energies of the living earth on your altar. For example, using an African violet plant to banish negativity or an aloe plant for physical healing. Um, another suggestion I have is basil. I did sell those kits of them. I, I don't see the stuff for them right here. Maybe I have one. Um, so I have these little basil packets that I um, give whenever somebody purchases from my shop. And um, on them, I write, where basil grows, no evil goes. Where basil is, no evil lives. It's just an old pagan poem. And, you know, basil would also be a useful one that you could use for eating. And aloe is another useful one that you could use for your hair or your skin or some type of healing that you might need. So thinking of that dual purpose might also really assist you when it comes down to it and um who knows you might find you you have a bit of a green thumb you know you're able to start off small and now you have a whole bunch of different plants um with the live plants though you do have to be careful because some plants you know need more light than others so depending on where your altar is just make sure that the plant is happy and thriving wherever it is okay Candles to honor the fire elements um, have some a small light candle. Other candles may be used according to the recommendations of the gateway. For safety, if you're using a large seven-day candle, place it in a bowl of water in a safe place on your altar. Never leave those candles burning when you're away from home. And she says blow it out upon completion of your spiritual observances. I've usually been taught to snuff it out, not blow the candle but to snuff it out, put something on top or pinch it with like a little bit of water or something like that, lick my fingers. That's usually the way I've been taught, but I know everybody's different. So do what you feel spiritually led to do. <laughs> then she talks about the baptism bowl where you'd be putting these infused waters that you also prepared for your spiritual bath. Fill a crystal or wooden bowl with purified water to absorb negativity in the environment. Pour it out after each altar ceremony and refill at the beginning of each of your sessions of altar work. Spending that time at the altar is a really great way to, um, you know, put in that work. And then also this little water ceremony of filling it up and releasing it is just a really good opening and closing to each of them. And it creates a bit of that ritual as well. A feather. Gently place a beautiful feather on a small pedestal or raised stand on your altar. This feather represents maintaining your balance through your journey, no matter how fiercely the winds of life blow. Now, I know Queen really loves ostrich feathers. You can find those online, and they're really beautiful and just extravagant and opulent. I love them. Um, a, a more hoodoo-based I guess you would say feather could be a black chicken feather or some kind of chicken feather if you have them around you. Definitely um, go around and see what you can do. You know what I mean? See what feathers you can find. Perhaps you found a feather outside that just speaks to you um, and it was found somewhere you love. You know, that feather could also be of real good use to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the Ankh or another sacred symbol. Place your ankh on a small velvet or silk cloth in the center of your altar. The ankh represents eternal life and unity in body, mind, and spirit. Another sacred symbol that you could use, especially if you're trying to lean more towards hoodoo and less towards comedic type of things, is a figurine. I have some beautiful figurines in my life. I have the um, Akuaba fertility doll. I don't have any of my stuff right around me, but I, I do have like the Akuaba fertility dolls. I do have a little praise house I've made. I have a Harriet Tubman figurine that I, it's a little metal one that I um, got off of a wonderful artist. He was selling them on Etsy randomly and I just happened to see them and there's two left. So I was like, one of those is for me. <laughs> and it's one of my favorites. I made La Madama figurines. You can find a lot of La Madama figurines. That would also be a wonderful one. You spread out that beautiful velvet cloth and you put her front and center. And La Madama represents um, 
she you knows spiritual guardians of black women so everybody's lama dama spirit is a little bit different and that way you could easily have her there and you know really connect with her in that way another one is i just made that high john figurine i'm i'm actually looking to go into making um an uncle monday figurine because i've noticed we just don't have a lot of these black men represented as well and it's good if we can buy them from black owned sources right so you know finding those different ways making your own figurine maybe making a face jug we've talked about those and the importance of face jugs in um, African American history and how they relate to the Nkisi dolls of West Africa of the Congo um, so you know there's endless options and you what you're really doing there is having this um, focal point where you can really understand what it is that um, you're focusing on right what um, what spirits you're trying to convey what practice you're trying to utilize when it comes to this altar so those are oh and also just a picture of of a favored ancestor that you work with would be more than enough go find one of the old polaroids or whatever that you have you know how uh, in the I, have, I feel like from the 80s to the early 2000s having tons and tons of those kodak picture envelopes was a really big thing and my family even has a ton from my husband's mother because she just took a ton of pictures and she would print them out and she didn't label most of them so it's sometimes it's just going through them is just a treat you just don't know what you're gonna find um but yes there's so many of those and it's a wonderful way to also put it there again you can also put the ankh if that's you know even if you're not super comedic the ankh has kind of transcended out of just ancient egypt and become a universal symbol within the black diaspora for you know family for the peace for eternal life for unity between the three elements it could be the man woman and child it can be the body mind and spirit it can be so many different things it's just a really wonderful symbol food rinse and dry all sacred food to be offered to the inter the mother father creator and your ancestors your offerings should consist of high quality dried grains and fresh fruits placed in a beautiful wooden glass or clay bowl now you know this is another one where it's going to require you to come back to your altar time and time again because you are um you're not wanting things to rot and like stuff like that to occur on your altar and keep in mind you may not even have to have two altars you could just keep you know pictures of people who are alive off of your ancestor altar and just focus on the the dead on your altar instead and that way you would only have one if let's say you're working with just a little bit of space and also consider ways to make this altar miniature and portable and that way it can be put away when it's needed to you can take it out spread it out use it that way as well so finally anointing oils you know use a small amount of your essential oils to anoint and bless your forehead your heart your abdomen thus connecting the womb of your thoughts and emotions with your physical um uh, with your physical womb use only the finest of essential oils as they have high spiritual vibrations suggested oils rose frankincense myrrh cinnamon lavender jasmine as with other colors choose the fragrance best suited for your meditative purpose there's a master chart on page 134 to 139 with more information if you have the book and refresh your sacred altar on the first day of your entry into each gateway so um, with your anointing oils, again, use what you have. Um, and also, you know, and maybe infuse waters if you don't have those. You might have rose petals. You might have lavender. You know, you might have um, cinnamon. And the, when you have those different things, just make yourself some little waters. Put Keep it in the fridge and pour out a little bit for blessing yourself, anointing yourself daily. This could be a very simple thing. Okay. So... Finally, I think Oh, she does. I want to say also she does mention um, the Sanab Freedom Schaller quilt 
there is a playlist for that. We did do that, I think, last year, the year before that. And so, yeah, the year before that, I think. I don't remember. At any rate, we did do that. So please, if you'd like to do that, um, go ahead and look at those. If we make one patch for each um, for each gateway. And then you can use that patch to combine together to make a shawl, to combine together to make a scarf, to combine together to make a head wrap, to put it on a quilt like I did. There's so many different options there. And honestly, the, the possibilities are endless. It's just a really beautiful thing. Okay, so I want us to do some fire breathing, right? So we can get our lungs a little bit um, more open. And then I wanted us to go ahead and do the spirit prayer and the womb prayer to get ourselves in attunement. So with your mouth closed, you inhale deeply through your nostrils. Uh, and um, you expand your chest and then um, exhale fully. Sorry. Okay, so I'm just gonna explain, I'm just gonna explain it without reading it because for it feels weird having to read it through like that. So basically, when we breathe in, we want our tummy to go out. When we breathe out, we want our tummy to go back in because we are, you know, um, expanding full of the air and releasing. If you get lightheaded, just breathe normally because we're not trying to push ourselves like over the top or anything. We're not trying to hurt ourselves. And we're going to start with 50. And yes, okay. But yeah, the more you do, the more it will, um, the more you'll, you'll be able to do. You'll be building up your lung strength. So let's work. Do a few slow breaths first. Now, one of the important parts about doing our fire breaths is it does make you a little lightheaded, which helps you to be able to connect a little bit better with the spiritual side of everything. It gets that oxygen really flowing through your brain. And I know 50 doesn't feel like a lot if you're, you know, relatively used to breathing. <laughs> you know what I was saying? Usually, unless you've been like smoking or you're really, really out of shape, 50 is just kind of not that much. But I say always just build up, especially if you haven't been doing it very long. You don't want to just make yourself dizzy right off the bat. But we will be building up with those um, in a little bit. For the Sacred Woman Spirit Prayer, we're on page 29. Sacred Spirit, hold me near, close to your bosom. Protect me from all harm and fear, from the blows of life. Direct my steps in the right way as I journey through this vision. Sacred Spirit, surround me in your absolutely perfect light. Anoint me in your sacred purity, peace, and divine insight. Bless me, truly bless me, as I share this sacred life. Teach me, sacred spirit, to be in tune with the universe. Teach me how to heal with the inner and outer elements of air, fire, water, and earth. Divine Mother, give me the power to heal my womb. Bless the wombs of all of us and assist us in the healing of our wombs. Restore our faith that we may grow in strength power, and knowledge as we recapture the purity and sacredness of our womb. May the wombs in all our community be born again <laughs> to the eternal heights as womb healing and wellness spread over each and every land. Nuk pu nert 
commit. I am a sacred woman. I am a sacred woman. I am a sacred woman. All right, we're going to end there for today. Thank you so much for joining me here at the Shrine. If you would like to support any more, you can go to patreon.com slash Sankofa, uh, Sankofa Shrine. And if you would like to get any of the figurines that I mentioned earlier, ritualready.org is where you can go to support all of those um, needs that you might have for your altar. All right, thank you so, so much for watching. May your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads, and I will see you next time.